help me cross to the dying world is the cry of Jesus to us Christians today. In today's video, we'll be looking at the story of Tyler Perry, how he made a difference in someone's life by helping him cross an intersection. Maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is still Ogenwa Dilora. And I'm broadcasting from Daughters of Zion TV, Harare, Zimbabwe. We all know that this channel is all about dreaming again. When dreams don't come to pass, dream again. In today's videos, like I said, we'll be looking at the story of Tyler Perry. I've attached a link of the story in the description box below. In that story, Tyler, Tyler Perry told a story of one Mr. Butler whom he met at an intersection one day so just like his normal day to school on that day he was going to school and for getting to the intersection what his head was will someone help me cross and when he looked around he saw a blind man who wanted to cross the an intersection and he was beckoning for help from anyone around to help him cross the intersection he had to slow down and say i will help you and he helped the man cross the intersection. Unfortunately, the man was going to his school to sell some candies for to the students. And he said they continued that trip every day for a very long time. He came to the intersection. He heard the man cry, can you help me cross? It was a blind man going to his school to sell. And he had to help him cross the intersection. That's the same way it is with us Christians today. Mr. Butler, as he described him, was a blind man. He was at an intersection. He couldn't cross because he was blind. He needed help to cross because he was handicapped. He was limited by his blindness. In today's world, Jesus is not like, he's not blind. But it's like that Mr. Butler, he's crying to us. Jesus is a spirit. He has finished his work. He has gone back to heaven. And he had left the Holy Spirit to also stay with us, to minister to others through us. God wants to reach the dying world, but he wants to do it through us Christians. He's not blind, like I said, like Mr. Butler. But somehow, a spirit can minister, as a spirit, he can go to minister to this dying world. He can go to minister to these people. And he depends on us Christians to take the gospel, to take his message to this dying world. He wants to reach these people that don't, that don't know him. He wants to know, we want them to know him through us. Just like someone one day introduced Jesus to us. We were not just born with the consciousness of Christ. There was a point in our life, it might be as a child, it might be as an adult. Someone gave, sacrificed himself, him or herself, or time, or whatever, to introduce us to Christ. And today, we are Christian. In the same way, Jesus wants to reach the dying world and is asking us, can you sacrifice for me? Can you help me cross the intersection? The intersection that we are on one side with us. He's already inside of us. We are on one side with him. But there are people on the other side which he needs to reach through. And he wants to get to those people. He can't do that as a spirit. We need you and I so that he will do that through us. And he's crying. Can you help me cross? How then can we help him cross? In time like this, most often we are looking for big opportunities. We want to go to mission, maybe in another country, in another city, and we are limited by our work. We are looking for, oh, my children are still young. I wonder when they have grown up, maybe I'll start preaching the gospel, I'll start working for God. Or maybe you are looking for that position. Or whatever it is that we are giving as we are looking for the big opportunity for us to preach the gospel for us to be, allow God to use us but like Mr. Butler like the story of Mr. Butler and Tyler Perry is the same route that Tyler goes to school every day he passed through that intersection every day to go to his school on this day he said Mr. Butler was crying will someone help me cross Everyone was busy going about their daily schedule. But he decided to slow down and listen to that voice and say, yes, I can help you. It didn't cost him much. 
Because when he helped him, he now discovered that Mr. Butler was actually going to his school to sell candies, which means his trip was not disrupted. All it costed Tyler Perry was a little, maybe just a few minutes of slowing down. Giving Mr. Sh Mr. Butler his shoulder to hold on to. He said, he said, give me your shoulder. And he held onto his shoulder. And he crossed the intersection. The same, the same routine that he does every day. Those are on this day, he helped someone to cross. And Jesus is asking us, I'm not waiting for the time you will go for mission. If you are calling to that, it is okay. I'm not calling you to leave everything you are doing. See, in whatever you are doing, help me cross. Let me manifest myself through you. Let people see me through you in your daily activity. In whatever we do daily, not waiting for the big opportunity. In our daily activity, as you are in your working place, as you are in your family, as you are in wherever you find yourself, help me cross there. How do you help him cross? Not only verbally, yes, I want us to preach the gospel which most of us are doing, holding the microphone or whatever ways you are doing, preaching verbally. But see, it's not only about preaching verbally. In our daily life, in our lifestyles, are we demonstrating the power of God? Are people seeing the Christ in us, which is the hope of glory? I'm not talking about being that Mr. Nice guy that doesn't have any faults. That Mr. Nice guy that smiles at everything. No. In your life, are you living the life that God wants you to live daily? In that family, you are there. Well, how are you shining your light? God said, we are a city built upon the hill which cannot be hidden. We are light of the world. He has made us light. And he said, no one lights a lantern and put it under the table. You put it on top of the table for all to see. The purpose of the light is to give light to those in the darkness. We are light in this dark world. How are we showing light? How are we allowing people to see the light that Jesus have, written, have put in us? How are we allowing people to see Christ through us? There are many ways you can do that in your daily life. It may be an opportunity that presents itself for you to endure. Sometimes you have to take that nonsense from people. Like I say, I'm not talking about that Mr. Nice Guy that everybody knows he smiles, he takes on all shit. No. How can you help him cross? By enduring that pain. By taking that shit. Yes, it might not be a pleasant situation. By bearing with one another. Let people see the Christ in us. Christianity is about relationship. It's not only about praying 100 hours a day. We can speak in the tongue of fire. We can do whatever, we prophesy, move mountain. But the Bible says, if we have no love, if we have no love, then what is Christianity all about? If we have no love, love is forbears, love endures. Love doesn't claim its own rights. There are a lot of things. Love is, that is dead to self. We must bear with each other. As we demonstrate this fruit of the Spirit, then they will be able to accept Christ into their life. They will be able to read Jesus. Love, for me, what works most for me with my relationship with God is His love. His love makes me change my way. His love wins my heart. There's some things God will do for me. I'm like, oh God, why me? You did all this for me. If we must win the world for Christ, we must show love. We must sacrifice. We must endure. Life is not all about our own comfort. Life is not all about just for us to be comfortable or for us to be happy. Sometimes you sacrifice your own happiness for another person to come to Christ. Jesus, when he went to the cross, I don't think it was a pleasant time. But at that time, he sacrificed to bring us deliverance. He sacrificed to bring us salvation. Who are you sacrificing for? Is everything just about you? Who are you blessing their life? Jesus, help me cross. Show love to someone. And that person will come to Jesus. What are you doing for master? Is your life all about what you will get? Is your life all about material things? 
a day is coming, that fancy car won't count anymore. The fancy dresses, they will mean nothing. The flashy houses, they will not make any sense. A day is coming. What we count on that day will be how many lives have you imparted. This world is not our home. Jesus left us behind when we gave our life to Christ for a purpose. Each day, whose life are you turning around for the master? What are you enduring for the master to come true? Look at the story of Joseph. Joseph in the Bible, we saw all he passed through. Because the Bible says he sent him ahead to, pres to preserve the house of Israel. God sent Joseph, a man, ahead. He passed through all what he passed through. Because there was a mission, there was an assignment for his life. And he had to go through that. It wasn't because of his sin. His brother sold him into slavery. He went there. Potiphar's wife lied against him. He went in there in prison. All these years, he passed through all this for the purpose of preserving a generation. God might have allowed you to pass through some things for the purpose of preserving a generation. It's not all about your own glory. One thing I know about God, at the end, he will reward you, but you must endure for someone's sake. Look at the story of Daniel. We never heard much about Daniel walking around the streets of Babylon preaching. But the life he lived made Nebuchadnezzar to worship God. The life he lived made people to say, the, the, the king and his entourage and his cabinet to say, no, from this time onward, no one will worship any other king, any other God, except the God of Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did the same thing. They would have said, no, we are in a foreign land. We are all slaves. Where was God? When they took us into slavery and he brought us here, all these people are bound to this idol. Why not I? Let me just join them and bow. But they said no. Even though our situation is not comfortable, even though our situation is not pleasant, we will still stand by the word of God. And they stood by the word of God. They refused to bow to that idol. They suffered some consequences. It would have costed them their life, but they didn't mind to give their life. For the purpose of the kingdom, which purpose are you representing on earth? Are you just looking for your comfort? Are you just looking for your benefit? King Queen Esther was another person. He said, if I perish, let me perish. But for this risk, I must take it. What risk are you taking from the master? Is everything about convenience? What risk are you taking? What price are you paying for the master? What investment are you making for the kingdom? Someone made an investment for you to be where you are today. What are you investing in others? Is life all about you? We are coming to the end of the year. Go back, go, check out your record this year. I know a lot of calamity, a lot of things happen. But despite what happened to you, whose life have you imparted this year? People are crying around you. Will someone help me cross? Jesus is crying. Will someone help me cross? But there are also people, we can't talk about helping Jesus without talking about helping people. Like I say, Christianity is all about relationship. If we must move forward, if we will make impact of God, we must relate with people. Just like there are people around you crying, will someone help me cross? That person that needs a school fees is asking, will someone help me cross? Maybe you are in the position that you can help. How are you helping? That person that is hungry around you is saying, will someone help me cross? That sick person, what kindness are you showing? Kindness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Are you being kind? Christianity is not about speaking in tongues. It's not about calling down fire. It's about our relationship. God is a relational God. So who are you helping to cross? Whose life are you affecting? Shine a little light. Like Grams Morgan in his song. Say, shine a little light in this world. Shine a little light. Make that change that you want to see. Make your own little deposit. To you, it might be nothing. See, God gave us different talents. To someone five, to someone two, to someone one. Don't compare yourself with others. You might not have as much as they have. But the little you have, make an investment. The master is not looking at how massive your investment is. He's looking, is it proportional? He's checking your investment based on, is it proportional to the gift he has given to you? And even one, if you are given one talent, let your talent bring that 
that profit back to the master. They are giving, God has given you some resources. God has blessed you with so many things. Are you just using it just to make money? Just to make a living? He didn't give it to you just to make a living. Yes, you will make a living out of it. But he still wants you to bless people. God is a relational God. We are all here, all about people, all about human beings. We are doing all we are doing for God, for human beings. Remember when Jesus talked about that last day. He said, some of those who come. And he said, come into my kingdom. He said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you gave me clothes to wear. I was in prison, you visited me. I said, this people say, well, Lord, when do we see you in prison? I saw you naked, I saw you, and we did all this. He said, as long as you did it for the least of this, my brethren. As you are doing it for people, you are doing it for God. That is your own eternal investment. Make impact in the life of people. Someone sacrifice to make you, to bring you to where you are. Also sacrifice. Don't just feed that marriage over nothing. Sometimes you have to endure. You have to be patient. Don't just feed that job. I know you can. But don't just do whatever you feel because you have power. In all your daily endeavor, ask God, are you in his will? Seek to do it according to God's will. That is godliness. Godliness is working according to the will and purpose of God, being controlled by God. Let our focus be to do the will of the Father here on earth. That is why we are still standing here. Fulfill your deposit. Don't bother about what you have and what you don't have. We are not all given the same talent. But the little you have makes impact. Someone bless you, bless another person. Let the light keep shining. As it's like a networking business. That's what the kingdom of God is. Remember when God created man, just created a man and a woman. Today, how many billions of people do we have? All came through this man and woman. God sent one person. Jesus came alone. Then he got the 12 disciples. The 12 disciples kept getting others. And he kept getting people into the kingdom. Do your own part. Don't be afraid of what you have. You might not be preaching it like the man of God or doing it like the, the great man of God. You don't need to. Do it the way the Father has called you to do it. And at the end, you will bring glory to his name. In conclusion, I'll say, Jesus is crying out today. Like that Mr. Butler that was crying out at that intercession. Will someone help me cross? There are people dying on the other side. There are people who have not known him yet. Someone paid attention to Jesus Christ by giving him a shoulder, by giving him whatever he or she had. And today, you are a Christian. He wants you also to pay attention to his cry so that he will use you also to reach those that doesn't know him yet. He has not ceased crying. Give him a shoulder. Give him whatever you have. All Tyler Perry gave to Mr. Butler was his shoulder and he helped him cross that intersection. Give him what you have. He's not asking you for what you don't have. Tyler Perry didn't have to go and borrow a shoulder or borrow something he didn't have. He gave him what he had and he was able to cross. Help Jesus cross by helping someone cross. Someone around you needs help. Someone around you is crying. Someone needs to be preached to. Someone needs just about drinking water. Someone around you just needs medical bills. Someone is just school fees. Someone is just food on their table. Whatever the Lord has given to you, Use it to help someone cross. It might be a smile. It might be that talent. Maybe you are good at singing. Maybe you are good at cooking. Maybe you are good at comedy. Whatever the Lord has put onto you, don't look down on it. Use it to help someone cross. Use it to make a difference in someone's destiny so that at the end, the name of the Lord will be glorified. You'll be surprised on that day. The things you look down on, you get into heaven. You'll be surprised how much impact it made in people's life. You'll be surprised of how many souls it brought into the kingdom of God. Help the master cross and your life will never remain the same. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye.